behavior. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Nick Wan, and we're going to do some sliced basics today. We're going to be doing some exploratory data analysis in the way that I might walk through a data set. Maybe someone on Slice may walk through a data set. You might have seen me doing some of this stuff when we were doing some data blitz. Uh, if you've been on my channel live, you might have seen me cutting up some data in 30-minute uh, segments. Uh, so uh, just hang out with me, and uh, in the next few minutes, I'll just show you how I would approach some exploratory data analysis. And if you do like the content, just like NS Champ said, uh, hit the subscribe down there, like it, follow along, and uh, you can watch us live on uh, Monday through Thursdays, uh, Monday through Thursdays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch, and uh, the link's down below there somewhere. All right. <laughs> Let's get going. So I've already loaded in this data set. Uh, I've really just done the typical uh, pandas CSV load. Now, if you're working in R, you're working in a different language, you might load in CSVs differently. If you're even working in Python, you might be loading in your uh, CSVs differently. But I'm just going to work with pandas here, um, and I'm just going to start cutting through this data. Now, this data is uh, from the first episode of Sliced, uh, and this is uh, speed dating data. So the object in this um, data set in the, on this show uh, this particular episode was to find uh, the matches. So uh, in speed dating in this data set, you have two IDs. You have uh, the I ID, and then you have your partner's ID. And then if they matched, so if one liked the other person and the other person liked the other person, then uh, they'll be tagged with a one. But if they didn't match, if uh, they didn't like each other or one didn't like the other, then they'll be tagged with a zero. So the object was to see who would match and who wouldn't. And so uh, a lot of these uh, features are about uh, personality kind of questions, like uh, what kind of things do you do in your spare time? What's your hobbies? What are your ambitions? And uh, they have a lot about age and, and uh, you know, upbringing and that kind of stuff. Uh, in the speed dating, I think in the speed dating uh thing, <laughs> um, they are given a minute with each other. So I'm just going to <laughs> chat. I'm just going to uh, try to get through some of these things. And the first thing I, I, I like doing, and I don't know if anyone else likes doing this, but I just like taking a look at the info. Uh, I don't see a lot of people checking info. And you can see that there's just a lot of different columns already. Uh, 120 columns from what we brought in, so info is not actually going to work here. Um, so I'll just go back to D types, and then uh, we can start taking a look at all the different uh, data types. And there's again 120, so let's just take a head and look at the top 50. And uh, uh, most of them are integers or floats, so we can shove everything into a model, but we're going to want to see at least some things that correlate with match. So, <laughs> so let's just try to find some correlations with match and then see um, what correlates with this match column. And one way you could do that in pandas is using the core function. Uh, core will give you a, an R uh, correlation coefficient across all the different columns. And since we're only looking for uh, a particular column. I'm going to turn this into a data frame called DF core. Uh, and then I'm going to cut this down. So we're only looking at match. And so now I have all the correlation coefficients for all of the different columns. Now I'm also going to sort by match and I'm going to sort by, uh, um, actually should, it doesn't matter if I sort by ascending or descending. So when we sort, we can now see sort of what's at the top and what's what's negatively correlating and what's positively correlating. And uh, match obviously is 100% correlation because it's the same column. If we take a look at the top of it, top 20 features that uh, negatively correlate, you can see things that like uh, 
so if they wanted to go on a date with the other person, that was uh, some sort of correlation. Uh, do you want to go out with that person? Uh, a lot of these names are shorthanded. Again, there's a data set, uh, a data dictionary. You could uh, click it down there in the link. I'm actually going to go to it right now. Uh, it's this speed dating key. And uh, these will give me all the different um, features and what they actually mean. So we can start looking up, like, what did go out mean? Oh, that's not even in here. What did since for one mean? Oh, uh, this is uh, oh, four. Oh, yes. Um, you have 100 points to distribute among the following attributes. Give more points to those attributes you think your fellow men or women find more attractive or more important in a potential date and fewer points to those that they find less. Total must equal to 100. So this is like literal, uh, <laughs> like role-playing game. Give 100 points to these different attributes that you find attractive. Uh, negatively correlated with match. So apparently the, the more weight you put into being uh, sincere, the less uh, you're going to correlate with attracting someone, attracting that particular partner. That's interesting. Don't be yourself sad, yes. Uh, let's look on the other side. What's positively correlating? Uh, these are a little more... Uh, uh, direct. So you can see that all of these like have a particular name and then underscore O. Uh, these are related to uh, this matrix. So it's a scorecard. Uh, basically, uh, attractiveness, sincerity, intelligence, fun, ambition, shared interests. Uh, you can see these are the column names here. Uh, those are the ones that say IID or the uh, target individual might be scoring. And then O would be what their partner is scoring. So if, um, for instance, both of you, or if one, if your partner decides to put more points, put more uh, value, what was it? Oh, it's a yes or no. This, oh, no, it's a 1 through 10. It's a 1 through 10. So the more, the closer it is to 10 for DEC, uh, which I believe is decision. Yeah, I believe that's just decision. Whether or not, uh, yeah. Whether or not they want to just go on a date with you. That correlates, which makes sense. Ones correlate with more matches. Um, but then you have things like fun. And fun is just, how fun do you think this person was? <laughs> we'll get to coding in a second. We gotta actually know what we're coding first. So uh, if you're a fun person, if the other person finds you fun, that is a positive correlation. And some of these things like uh, uh, shared interests, how attractive they are, um, how intelligent they are, how sincere they are, these are all things that seem like they would correlate with uh, whether or not you would match with this partner. So let's just take a handful of these that we've read from here. Uh, attraction, sincerity, intelligence, fun, ambition, shared interests. We won't do these ones, but let's take these ones first. So uh, attraction, sincerity, fun, intelligence, uh, some other stuff that is in your ambition ambition these are like a list of things that i i really should like have a deeper think about in my own life attraction sincerity intelligence fun ambition shared interest sincerity fun intelligence mission shared interest okay so we'll take this and we'll call this IID features. Uh, we'll also want to have uh, PID features. 
Uh, we could just do a list comprehension for this. And we'll call that O for uh, X in IID feats. So now we'll have all these same things that's, that now are underscore O just like over here. So then we could say uh, uh, all features, and then we'll just add those features together. And then the target in this case is going to be match. So now we have something that says all feats. These have all those different things that seem to correlate positively with match. Let's just double check that. Uh, and the way I'll do it is I could just loop through uh, these features. Uh, X in this case is gonna be uh, the target. Uh, y in this case would be for Y in all features. And we'll go uh, with a reg plot from Seaborn. Uh, so all of this stuff is in our data frame. Uh, I kinda have adopted a new way of using uh, Seaborn, uh, I used to go X, Y, data, just like how the documentation says to do it, X, Y, data. Uh, but I've recently been going a data set first and then X, Y. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, that's just what I've been doing. Okay, and from here, I'm just kind of trying to see correlation uh, this isn't telling me too much. So I think what I want to do is I'll throw everything, since everything is on a 1 to 10 scale, I'm just going to throw everything into uh, a hue. Uh, and the hue will be... Um, we're going to need to make the data set a little different. You just call it ridge plot. <laughs> Make a copy so we don't overwrite anything. It's all of our data. Uh, we're actually going to specifically get only the features we need. Uh, that's going to be all the features we're looking for and the target feature. So all of these things. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we're going to try to melt these down. So the only thing we really care about is match as the target and all the rest of these things uh, will just melt into its own feature. So we'll use PD melt um, for this one. What's going on here? Um, I don't think ID variables matter here, but we'll call this match. So for every row we'll have all the different scores given the variable and the value. Let's just make that a little nicer. Actually, variable value, that, that might be fine. Let's just call it that. And then instead of looping through all of this, let's plot uh, the variable and then the value. The value in this case, oh wait, match in this case is our x. Y is going to be um, value, and our hue is going to be variable, 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 variable. Get rid of all these things. Do a little that. Do a little this. This apparently doesn't like this. So, uh, uh, do we want to do scatter plot and then? Fit a line to it. Scatter plot then to fit a line. Pair plot. That's what it's supposed to be. You're right. Pair plot. Pal plot. Pair plot. Pairwise is. Um, hue, we got the hue, data, yeah. Data hue, 
X variables, Y variables. I feel like we have X bars, Y bars. Do we have to like explicitly say X bars? Wow, that told us absolutely nothing. I feel like we were better off doing it the other way. <laughs> I feel like we were better off doing it this way, y'all. Um, y. And then let's just make it like this. Does it not like hue? Oh wait, does it matter if it has hue? Do label. And then to make it look nice, let's do a legend. And then this BB B box to anchor uh, equals 1.05, 1 1.021. 1 and then let's say loc2. This will just make it so the legend is kicked out side of the plot. It looks like this. So what does this mean? Well, it gives us an idea that um, some of these have higher correlations than others, like this orange one, right? This orange one, unfortunately, I'm, I'm unsure if it's in sincerity or if it's shared interests. But uh, some of this information could tell us what is going to be more correlative, what isn't going to be more correlative. Um, so this is one way to sort of start exploring the data. Another way you could do this is to just shove this all into a linear model and then start extracting feature importance from there. So I could just import uh, from scikit-learn uh, linear regression, or sorry, uh, logistic regression, uh, import logistic regression. This is gonna be really simple. It's not gonna be a good model. At least I don't think it's gonna be that good. Um, and we don't actually need to go too deep with it. We just need to fit the model. And so we'll fit this with the, the information we just had. And you might be wondering, like, why aren't you doing a train test split? Why aren't you splitting your training and testing sets? Well, we're just looking for ways to explore the data and more of a sort of uh, a broad stroke. We're not looking for any predictive stuff quite yet. Uh, when we start doing predictive stuff, uh, that's when we might want to be a little more, more precise with this. Uh, okay. So we'll, since there's NANs, we'll, we'll make something called model data. Um, all beats plus targets. Targets a string. Drop NA. Use model data instead, fit the model. Uh, now we have a model that's fit. In the model, uh, we have uh, something in here called, it's in here somewhere. It's in here somewhere. Um, am I missing it, chat? Maybe so. That's okay. Um, how many of those are statistically significant? We could run that too, but what's more important is we'll install SHAP and we'll import SHAP. Uh, and SHAP will give us some feature importance information um, I always forget how to do SHAP stuff. SHAP. 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 Kernel explainer, linear explainer, that's what I want to do. Sentiment analysis with logistic regression, okay. All I want is this information. Okay, linear explainer. That's what we want. Uh, Shap, linear explainer, linear explainer. I need the model. We call that model. I need, uh, what else do I need? 
X train. Okay. In that case, for us, uh, we're using model data. This is our X train. Okay. Uh, so that's the explainer. Then we have shap values. Okay. Shap values. Uh, this is shap values x as well. Okay. Easy enough. And we'll just use that same thing here. Run through that. That's all ready to go. And then we just need to use the shap summary plot. Hopefully this gives me what I want. Um, this just needs to be this again. Feature names, don't need that. This should just pop them out. Okay, so now we have a uh, feature importance, which is another visualization type that sort of helps me see uh, which of these features actually were contributing to the model accuracy. Uh, and in this case, we're seeing that if you want to get a match in this data set, so uh, one partner and the other partner both saying they like each other, uh, be attractive. Who would have thought being attractive would be a, a strong indicator in the speed dating scene? So being attractive is good. Shared interest is up there in terms of this linear regression. So having shared interest, that's an important thing. In fact, having shared interest, if you're a 10 on shared interest, that's almost as good as being like a 9 in terms of attractiveness. Isn't that good? Isn't that pretty interesting? Um... Being fun, that's as good as being an, uh, you know, attractiveness eight, plus or minus the interactions, you know? Uh, some of the more interesting ones here, ambition. The more ambitious someone seemed to be, perhaps the more negatively impacting that was to the, to the match probability. And the explanation for this might be, you know, uh, maybe they, they're going to be too occupied with, uh, you know, their, their own thing, work or, or career or school or whatever it might be. Uh, and, and they're not going to be really, uh, uh, available in terms of, uh, dating or relationships. Perhaps that's one thing. Sincerity. This is also weird. The, apparently the more sincere someone seemed, the, uh, less likely there was going to be a match. And intelligence being a uh, uh, carrying the the back end here, so seeming intelligent. Although you know the more intelligent you seem, the better it was for you. Um, it wasn't as important as some of these other features. What does Shap do for a linear model? Is it much more useful than comparing the weights? If the weights are unbalanced, uh, or if there's different scales for them, then Shap will normalize those. So this would be impact on the model, uh, irrespective of scaling. So this would be like a couple different ways you can use to explore your your data set while you know along the way you're collecting potentially some points towards uh, data visualization points or or even like a crowd audience points maybe they enjoy some of this visualization maybe maybe you're doing things in a way that that allows uh, for you to uh, promote your creativity and aesthetic out there during the slice competition. Uh, there's many different ways to explore, but some pretty simple ways uh, like correlation, using those correl using some strong correl correlating features uh, in some sort of data visualization form, and then perhaps even just shoving that stuff through a model, a uh, really simple model, and spitting out something that that might even terse out even more relationship to your target variable. Um, all of these things we've seen success with on Sliced. And if you are a contestant on Sliced or you're interested in being a contestant on Sliced and you think you could do even better than this, I recommend checking out Sliced. That's Tuesdays over on my Twitch channel. That's live, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. And if you're interested in being a contestant, check out the link below. There is something down there for people who are interested in competing on Slice. It's a data science competition. Four data scientists blindly uh, analyze 
through or for data scientists get a blind data set they've never seen before and try to make a predictive model, develop data visualization, try to uh, entertain the crowd along the way, all within two hours. Uh, if you like this content, please hit the subscribe, like down below, and I'll catch you live over on Twitch soon.